Hello stamping friends, it's Liz Holloway at stamperspots.com and welcome to my How It's Made video. In this video, I'm going to show you the two difference between the watercolor um, painting and as well as the uh, blendabilities. So let's get started. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to use the Partridge and Pears step set from the holiday catalog and I'll be using on both the watercolor and the blendabilities. And I will also use the same uh, color to make sure that you can see the difference. Okay, so let's get started. I'm stamping the tree with Versamark and then I'm going to emboss it with the uh, black embossing powder. Now I'm heating this up until all the powder has melted. So I'm taking my color palette and the aqua painter. I'm going to paint each of the leaves with Old Olive and Always Artichoke reinkers, and I'm putting it in the palette well. Here, instead of adding water, I have water in the reservoir, and I'm taking up the the Old Olive color from the palette, and just and I'm just applying the color directly onto the watercolor. Now, there's enough water in the reservoir to uh, spread the the ink it's around. I'm going to color each of the leaves with three inkers, uh, the old olive three inkers, and I'm going to add a little bit of music in the background so you can see what I'm doing. Next, I am applying the Always Artichoke to the lines of the, each of the leaves and then at the bottom of the leaf, just to give it some depth. Cleaning my aqua painter and still picking up the old olive just to blend the two, the two colors together. Now the next color I'm picking up is the Daffodil Delight and I'm coloring the, the pears in that color. And again there's only a little bit of water in the reservoir so I'm squeezing out a little bit. And as you can see I'm picking up more colors to, to the right side of the pear. At first I didn't know which color. I decided that I wanted more of a shading color of um, kind of like an orange color and you know, I decided that I wanted more of a shading on the right hand side. I wasn't sure where my uh, tangerine tango was so I tested it out to make sure that it was the tangerine tango. Here I am applying the uh, on the right hand side of the pair and then what I did was I ended up blending up the blending the Daffodil Delight and the Tangerine Tango together. Next color is the Real Red Reinkers for the cherries and all I'm doing is just adding it to directly to paper, not really squeezing the barrel. I don't really want too much water so just taking a touch of paint and just dabbing it right onto the berries. Next I'm using the Pacific Point in the barrel and just adding uh, the Pacific Point right on the feathers and as well his beaks and his head and then coming in with the pool party re and just coloring his body. 
and then coming in again with the Pacific point and just coloring his feathers and then I have decided that I want more shadings right onto on his feathers and so I darken the upper part of his feather and then again blending the two colors in for the tree trunk I'm using chocolate chip and the uh, and the crumb cake I'm using my crumb cake to to paint onto the uh, trunk I want some shading so I'm adding some chocolate chip on the left hand side uh, just to blend it and then blending it in again you don't really need too much water when you're doing small areas uh, just using enough water from the the barrel and onto the the aqua painters okay so now we're working on the blendabilities and I'm using the memento ink and the same stamps and then I'm going to actually stamp it right onto the watercolor paper so that you can see the, t the difference between the two so I'm inking it well with the memento ink and then pressing it right onto the watercolor paper now I want to hold it down there for a couple seconds just to make sure that the ink is uh, transferred right onto the paper itself. Now letting it dry for a couple seconds and then I'm taking my blendabilities. This is the old olive which is the light color and I'm coloring each of the leaves with the old olive light. At this point you want to make sure that you only do a couple leaves at a time because you don't want the ink to dry and then taking your next color and blending it in. Here I'm taking the medium and then just outlining the, the leaf line and at the point where the leaf joins onto the branch and then coming back in with the light color and blending the two colors in. I'm leaving my cap off because the areas I'm um, coloring are quite small and so I want it to work fast so I'm switching between the two colors the light and the medium and again this is where I'm going to put the music on so that you can watch me color When you're capping your blendabilities, lay the uh, the barrel and the cap down flat, and um, push in your cap. You'd, if you cap it the wrong way, you can damage your nib. The next set of colors, I'm using the pumpkin pie, as well as the daffodil delight. So first off, I'm taking the daff uh, the pumpkin pie light and coloring the pears in. And the next thing is taking the medium uh, pumpkin pie and shading the right area, uh, right side of the pear. Then bringing your light pumpkin pie marker in and then just feathering it to the left hand side and blending the two colors in. I want to add it more darker shade just like the other one so I took my dark pumpkin pie and uh, added sh more shade to onto the right side and then blending it back in again with the light marker.
You know, I'm bringing in my Coastal Cabana because I don't have any Pacific Point. So again, starting off with the lightest color and coloring the partridge bird. You, know, you want to saturate your cardstock so that uh, when you're blending the two colors in, uh, it's wet enough so that you can blend them all in. And then I'm taking the darker Costa Cabana and applying the dark areas around his, um, his feathers. And then taking the light and blending it in. Now I noticed that the dark and the light uh, Costa Cabana wasn't blending as uh, well as I would like it to. So I came back with my medium Costa Cabana and just apply it right onto the uh, feathers and then blending it right back in. Now I had uh, made a mistake and I colored it outside. I colored it outside the line so I'm taking my colorless uh, blendability and pushing the colors right back into into the feathers. I see I can I missed a leaf so I'm coming back with my old olives blendabilities. And I'm taking the cherry cobbler uh, light and color in all the berries. I haven't really played with these uh, brown markers and so what I did was I tested the colors out to make sure this is the trunk color that I wanted. So I decided that I'm going to use the the medium and the dark uh, blendabilities to color my trunk in. Starting off with the light color and coloring the trunk and just and make sure that the, uh, the watercolor paper is saturated first. And then coming in with the darker blendabilities and shading the areas in where I want dark. So now that I have done my coloring, the left side is the uh, watercolor and how I can tell is uh, if you touched it, it's raised a bit from the uh, embossing powder and then the right side is the blendabilities when I use the momentum ink to and it is flat. Okay, so that's how you can tell the, the two difference. Now, I don't know where I'm going with this card, so I thought I would use my circle uh, collection framelits, and I'm using die number seven. And um, what I'm going to do is I thought maybe I'll cut out the uh, a bit of the trunk out so that it overlays out of the circle. But then I didn't know how far to cut, so I I'm using a black felt marker and marking where the cut line is. Returning my paper snips and cutting it right against the, uh, the black emboss line to the cut line. And then you repeat on the other side so it's consistent. Okay, now at this point I'm going to take my circle framelits and what you want to do is slip this right underneath uh, the trunk uh, just over top the, the circle framelits and um, line it up as close as you can. Now if your uh, cutting piece is not um, long enough, go ahead and trim it up a little bit and then I'm going to take that, take it to my big shot and cut out the circle. So here is my cut piece and this is the uh, blendabilities and I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, for the um, watercolor piece. There are still some areas that are still not outlined, so what I did was I took my black fine tip felt marker and mark it in and just color in the leaves. Down at the bottom where the markings are, I didn't like how that looks, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my um, watercolor paint and the palette and just adding um, a bit of blue, the pool party blue, right at the bottom so that there are some kind of shading. And I'm going to repeat on the um, blend the blendabilities uh, piece. Now my watercolor paper is a bit warped from all the watercoloring, so I'm taking my heat tool and heating the back of the watercolor paper. This will eliminate the warping once it cools down and it's lying down flat. 
Now I want some shine to my pear, so I'm taking my crystal effect to add some kind of glimmer and some depth to the pears. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the tip and pushing it right to the areas that are really small and hard to get to. Here I have a prepared three and a quarter by five inch wood grain artichoke cardstock and I'm coloring it with uh, the brayer. I'm using old olive and braying it right onto the cardstock. I got a number four starburst die using the cherry cobbler and all the, uh, to, all the uh, measurements will be on my blog which you will find at the bottom of the video and so here I cut it up with uh, the number four starburst die, framelits die and then gluing the piece onto the paper. Now at this time I still don't know where I'm going with this uh, piece so I'm kind of winging it and um, whatever is appealing to the eye. Now, I don't like how um, the trunk is actually sitting on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my number four die, uh, starburst die again, and lining it up so that uh, the jagged edges are lined up to the framelits. And then taking it to my Big Shot and cutting it out. Repeat the same process onto the watercolor paper with the blendabilities. So this is my uh, watercolor piece and I am attaching it to the prepared wood grain uh, panel. And I'm going to repeat it on the other card and this is the blendabilities. Now the card itself looks so plain to me so I'm going to add a sentiment to the card. So I'm going to use the uh, sending wishes for the merriest Christmas ever. And at the same time, I'm going to use the same watercolor paper so that the paper is the same. For the watercolor side, I'm going to use the same method as I did with the watercolor by using the Versamark ink and the embossing powder as well as the heat tool. And then taking my palette and coloring the pair with the Daffodil Delight reinker and applying the um, aqua painter onto the stamped image. Here, coloring the same method as the watercolor and then picking it up uh, using the Tangerine Tangle to give it some uh, shadowing effect on the right hand side. I still don't know where I'm going with this card, so kind of placed it onto the water piece and I didn't like how the pear is sitting right on the right hand side so what I'm gonna do is I take it to my big paper trimmer and trim out the words as well as the pear. Now I trimmed the words to about three quarter inch and I'm bringing back my watercolor piece and I'm still not happy with it so what I'm going to do is cutting off the, the pear and then fussy cutting it around the pear and the ribbon. And I placed it right on the left side and I like it so what I'm going to do is I'm taking my dimensionals and adding dimensionals onto the back of the uh, sentiment and then popping up the pear as well on the left hand side. Now to me this is still not finished because I have already added crystal effect onto the pears. I'm going to get my crystal effect again and add, uh, add it onto that cut pair that I just did. This time instead of making a square on the on the right hand side I took my pair of scissors and cut it right up the middle and then at the two points to the middle that will create my flag. The image is still missing something and so what I had decided to do was color my pearls with the old olive dark and add it to the four corners and now my card is actually complete. So I add it onto the um, cherry cobbler base card. This brings the end of my tutorial and I hope I had brought inspirations to you. The left side is the uh, watercolor and the right side is the blendabilities and I'll let you choose as to which one you like. I do like both of them um, depending on my day of coloring. I like both 
of the watercolor and the blendabilities. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you had a great day.